Look, for people watching this program right across Australia and indeed around the world, it may surprise you to know that large tracts of Australia's productive land are in the middle of a drought. There are farmers writing to me who are feeding their stock and it's a very expensive game. I also read about the so-called bush summits. By and large, it's a lot of hot air. There are two words rarely mentioned, water and dams. 21 years ago, I co-opted some of the great practical and successful thinkers in this country, the late Kerry Packer, the late Dick Pratt, the late media genius Sam Chisholm, John Singleton, Bob Mansfield, John Hartigan on behalf of News Limited and myself. We stumped up our money from Water Summit, a lot of research to clear the path for harvesting and using water 21 years ago. Yet how many hundreds of millions of dollars have gone into futile drought relief which does nothing to ensure that we won't be back in drought again. It is a dishonest argument that the nation is short of water. We only use at most 6% of our available water. For example, Lake Argyle in Western Australia releases 50 tonnes of water a second. Only 10% of it is used in the ore irrigation system. 45 tonnes a second is pushed into the Timor Sea. 4 billion litres a day. Yet the catchment area of the Fitzroy River is 50% greater than that of the Ord. Get your head around this, which won't get a mention at any bush summit. Queensland's northeast has four times the water of the Murray-Darling Basin. The total flow down the Murray-Darling Basin is less than 23,000 gigalitres. In the northeast coastal region of Queensland, that's heading up around Cape York, 70,000 gigalitres flow into the sea. I've argued for 30 years that we've left our brains behind. A gigalitre is a thousand Olympic-sized swimming pools. So northeast Queensland has 70,000 multiplied by 1,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools flowing into the ocean. Go further west, the Gulf of Carpentaria, it's got 130,000 available gigalitres. 130,000 times 1,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Take Sydney, 400 billion litres of sewage. Now, sewerage are the pipes. Sewage is the stuff that goes through the pipes. 400 billion litres of sewage, much of it untreated, goes into the ocean off the coast of Sydney every year. Or a thousand Olympic-sized swimming pools of water goes to waste every day. But we can't harvest water. We can't build dams. How useless can government be? But we can build a 3,200 kilometre pipeline to carry gas from Papua New Guinea to Brisbane, and we can build a useless railway line from Darwin to Alice Springs, but we can't harvest water, we can't transport water, we can't dam water. Jack Beale was a minister in the New South Wales government in the 1940s. He proposed the development of the Clarence Basin in northern New South Wales to create a giant water and power project that would dwarf the Snowy Mountain Scheme. He said, a nation can't afford to let resources remain idle, even if it has to build pyramids. The pathetic behaviour of successive governments on the issue of harvesting and damming water dishonours people like Jack Beale. But it is now worse than that because, with all this Aboriginal heritage stuff, wind farms change changing the landscape and ruining agricultural land because renewable energy, of course, will save the planet, won't it? The place is being run by tossers. A tosser is defined as an obnoxious person. So speaking of tossers, if Bowen and co think that the farmers are going to be a pushover and will surrender their agricultural land to transmission lines, wind farms and solar farms, the arrogant and incompetent Bowen will need to think again.